Okay, some people have asked us what we do for our uh, family Bible study time, and, and they've asked for material. Uh, basically, all we do is we get a children's Bible, and we read through the stories, and we talk about what we read about. Uh, one of the better children's Bible is the American Bible Society Read and Learn Bible. This is one of our favorites, and so we just read through it and talk. So you're welcome to join us. We're going to try and do this every night about the same time, and all the kids are here. Uh, it's unscripted, it's unrehearsed, and it's uh, real life. So uh, hopefully the children will behave, and if they don't, you're going to see real life. <laughs> uh, punishments and all. So let's go back to where we were. Does everybody remember what story we were talking about last time? The tabernacle. Yeah, they just built the tabernacle. Uh, what was special about the tabernacle? It was God's holy tent. We need to raise our hands, right? Jaden? It was God's holy tent. It was just a tent, though. What made it special? Kaya? Because God lived. Kaya, I wish. God lived there. Pull your shirt down. Yeah, God lived there. Right? He, well, his spirit dwelled there. Did God really live in the temple? No. In the tabernacle? Ania? No. No. Where, did, where does God live? Greg? Um, in heaven. In heaven. Yeah, that's how. That's a good answer. That just means that God is above us. Really, you can't ask that question. Where does God live? That's a good question with people, right? You live someplace, right? You live here. You, when you travel, you are wherever you're traveling. But God doesn't work like that because God doesn't have a body. So there's not a place where God lives. But the Bible talks about God living in heaven because heaven is high. And people, when they like something or when they love something, they talk about it being high. And so they talk about God being high above the heavens because he's the best. So the heavens is the sky. What's higher than the sky? Greg? Um, the sun. Great. Okay. That's right. From a spatial perspective, right? But in our, on our world... On Earth, what's higher than the sky, Zane? The angel realm. No, on our world, what's higher than the sky, Jaden? Our space. Nope, on our world, what's higher than the sky, Ania? The atmosphere. Nope, Greg? Nothing. Nothing, right? So when you say God is above the highest heaven, you're saying God is bigger than everything. That's what that means, right? So God is bigger and greater than everything. And so when we ask the question, where does God live? You can't really ask, answer a where question about God. Because God is, we talked about this today in the adult Bible class, he's omnipresent. So God doesn't, he's not stuck somewhere. Right? He doesn't live in San Francisco or in New York City or in London. He doesn't live in a place and he doesn't live anywhere above us in a place. God is not the man who lives in the sky. God is an eternal spirit and he has no beginning and he has no end. And he is contained by nothing. If he is contained by nothing, right? So he doesn't live inside a box. There's nothing that he lives inside. He can be anywhere. So you, can, you really can't answer that question. So when they built the tabernacle, God's presence came into the tabernacle, and that made it special. Can you think of another place where God's presence goes? The temple. The temple. Can you think of another place where God's presence goes? Ania? In our hearts. In us. Yeah. Can you think of another place, Greg? Find what you're looking for? No? Where else? Jaden? Everywhere. In a way, God is everywhere. But we're talking about his special presence. Like when he told Israel, I will come and I will dwell on the mercy seat. Right? He was going to come and meet them there. So that's a special a special presence of God. Jaden? God was on Mount Sinai. Yeah, he came down on the mountain, didn't he? Where else, Greg? What led the Israelites through the wilderness? A big pillar of fire. And, right, that's one, a pillar of fire. And what else, Jaden? Smoke. And smoke or cloud, right? So that was God's presence. He leads them where he wants them to go. What right? about rain? Well, sometimes it rains, but that, that's not what we were talking about this time. All right, so now we're past that in this Bible, and we're going to read from Numbers chapter 13 and 14 where it talks about a big mistake. So God is leading Israel through the wilderness with the cloud and the fire, 
And he's taking them someplace special. Where is he taking them? Jaden? The promised land. Yeah. To flowing with milk and honey. A land flowing with milk and honey. The promised land. Who did he promise it to? <coughs> Zane? Israelites. Uh, before that. Ania? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Okay, so let's read. It says, At last the Israelites came to a place near Canaan, the promised land. Canaan was a big land with many cities. Each city was ruled by a king. In the ancient world, the cities were more like we think of countries. And so instead of having a big country with lots of cities, they would have what we call city-states. And so it was different cities would be huge, and they would have their own armies, and those cities would go and fight with the other cities. And so each city would have its own kind of like a king. What we would think of a mayor would be the king of these things. So Canaan was a big land with many cities, and each city was ruled by a king. Before Moses could take the people there, he, did, he had to find out what it was like. How many people lived there? Were they strong? Were they weak? Was the land good, or was the land bad? So if God promised them the land, do you think it's going to be good or bad? Good. 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 Right. Because when, when God blesses people, he blesses them what? With good things. With good things, overflowing, abundant, right? We, we hear things like that. Yes? I love you too. Okay, so Moses chose 12 men to go into Can uh, Canaan. Can you name two of them? Zane, name one. Caleb. Jaden, name the other. Joshua. Joshua and Caleb. They're going to go and they're going to be part of these 12 spies that go and spy out the land. And so they're going to go, and they're going to check it out. Let's see what happens. Forty days later, the twelve spies came back. Notice forty days. What else is forty days? Ania? Um, when Noah was on the ark, it was forty days and forty nights that breathed. Forty days, right? Anybody else know forty days? Yep. Or forty. It doesn't have to be days. Just forty. Yes? Oh, uh -huh. Zane? 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years in the wilderness. We're almost there. Steve? When Jesus was tempted, he was in the desert for 40 days. For 40 days, days right? Ania? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Moses killed the Egyptian. He was 40 years old. He was 40 years old, then he was gone for 40 years, and then he was alive for 40 more years. There's lots of 40s. What just happened that was 40 days long? Greg, do you remember? Um, Moses was up on the... Mountain. Mountain for 40 days, right? So 40 happens a lot. Pay attention as you read through the Bible. Pay attention to the number 40. It's important. Okay, so 40 days later, the 12 spies came back. The land is good, they said. It's rich with milk and honey, but the people are big and strong. Next to them, we felt small like grasshoppers. Now, is this a bad report? Think carefully. Is this a bad report, no. Kaya? I saw a grasshopper. No. No. What is this? What did they just tell them? The land is flowing with milk and honey. They told them the good things. Truth. Truth. They told them the truth. It's a good land. There's strong people there. They made us feel small. That's true. Right? That's not the bad report. Well, let's see what it is. Most of the spies told Moses it would be foolish to enter the land. If there were a battle, they could never win against the giant people. It would be better if they went back to Egypt. Now, is that a bad report? Yes. Oh, yes. See, the problem is not when they told the truth. They told it, it's a land, it's flowing milk and honey. They brought back a cluster of grapes that was how big? As big as a person. Oh, I didn't see a hand. You can raise your hand. I'll call on you. Steven? As big as a person. As big as a man. Not just a person, because Lily is a person. But a cluster of grapes that was as big as Lily is a lot smaller than a cluster of grapes as big as me. It would still be impressive. It would still be impressive, yeah. It's so a huge, right? And so they, it was a good land, and it, it has huge people. That's just true. The bad report was when they said, we shouldn't go, they'll kill us. It would be a disaster if we went. Let's just go back to Egypt. Right. Do you think that's going to make God angry or happy? Who says angry? The Bible. Yeah, the Bible. 
I, I think you're right. Now, who promised to give them the land? Just say it. God. God. Who, who promised to keep them safe if they were faithful? God. So when they come back and say, we'll lose if we go into the promised land, who did they not trust? God. They weren't trusting God. Right. So, no. So not every spy said, don't go. No, said Caleb, one of the spies. Let's go and take the land. I know we can do it. Another spy, Joshua, said, If we obey God, we will surely get the land that he has promised. Joshua, now this is a note about Joshua. Joshua was the son of Nun of the tribe of Ephraim. He was one of the spies sent by Moses to explore the land of Canaan. His name means, does anybody remember? We've talked about it before, Stevie. Jesus. That is Jesus' name. Yeah, Joshua is Yeshua in Greek and Hebrew. And Jesus' name is Yeshua. So Jesus' name is? Joshua. Joshua, really, Joshua, right. Does anybody remember what Joshua means? Kaya? Is the Lord, the Lord is part of it. The Lord is my salvation, or the Lord saves. Right? That's kind of what it means. Something like that in English. And so... Jesus comes, and his name, Yeshua, means the Lord is salvation. And salvation comes through him. Through him, through Jesus. Right, good. Okay. So no one listened to Caleb and Joshua. They decided to rise up against Moses and start going back to Egypt. Moses demanded, or, or they demanded that Moses take them back. God was angry that the people he had led out of slavery had such little faith. He had not, uh, they had, they had they not seen the, the miracles that he had performed? Didn't they trust him to protect them? God told Moses that only Caleb and Joshua would get to go to the land of milk and honey. Everybody who is 20 years old or older, only two of them will get to go to the land of promise. So what about somebody who is 19? Would they get to go? Yes, sir. What about somebody who is 17? Yes, sir. What about somebody who is 12? Yes, sir. 6? Yes, sir. 3? Yes, sir. 1? Yes. 21? No. 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 Why not? No. At what age did you become an adult in Israel? 20. At 20. So if you were 20 years old, God said that you are responsible enough to choose for yourself. Nobody who is 20 years old or older stood up and did the right thing. Except for who? Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua. And since they stood up to do the right thing, God said they will get to go into the promised land. Just them. Now, did Israel do the right thing? Did they listen to Caleb and Joshua? No. 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 Did God punish Joshua and Caleb because Israel did the wrong thing? No. no. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. right? He punished the whole nation. He made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years. But he didn't hold Joshua and Caleb accountable. In other words, he recognized it wasn't their fault. But he also blessed Caleb and Joshua by letting them go into the promised land. And in fact, Joshua would become a leader. So did, yes, they, did they go into the promised land right away? Uh, well, they send the spies in. Then they come back and they decide that they want to go back to Egypt. Then God gets very upset. And then God tells them, all of you are going to die in the wilderness. Then some of the men decide that, well, we'll go fight now. But it was too late. And so they lose the battle. And then they wander around in the wilderness for 40 years. And at the end of 40 years, God takes them back to the promised land. And Joshua will lead them into the promised land. Uh, Joshua, Yeshua, leads Israel into the promised land. Jesus, the Savior, also Joshua, leads God's Israel, spiritual Israel, to where? Heaven. To heaven, right? So you see the you see the picture? Yeah, Joshua, physical Joshua leads physical Israel into a physical promised land. Spiritual Joshua leads spiritual Israel into a spiritual promised land. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Stevie? So if you were in your early twenties, you basically just had a very short life expectancy. Well, you would be alive for at least forty years. But you should have spoken up. Right? So if you know the right thing to do, do it. That's, a, if, that's important. What if you're 20 you weren't really knowing what you were doing yet? Uh, God, is, God is gracious and just, and he always does the right thing. 
And so there may have been people who, who didn't understand, and God will deal with them. But as a law for Israel, when you were 20, you were an adult. And God expected you to do the right thing. And if you were 20 years old and you didn't do the right thing, God held you accountable for it. Okay? Uh, so let's see. God told Moses that only Caleb and Joshua would get to go to the land of milk and honey. The rest of the people would have to spend their lives in the desert. After 40 years, though, he would take their sons and their daughters to the promised land. Right? So that's kind of the end of our story tonight. Were there any questions? No? Did that all make sense? No. Did anybody notice anything that they thought was neat? Jaden? The little picture with like G- Jesus and Joshua. Yeah, I think that's cool too. And, and you'll see that a lot when you go through the Old Testament. God will do something with physical things. And really what he's trying to teach us is he's trying to teach us spiritual things. Because God, God wants to save people spiritually. And so when you see things like that, you can see God doing something spiritual later. And they, they parallel each other. They're the same thing. One is physical and one is spiritual. Did anybody else notice anything? Or think of something that was neat? Greg? Yeah, you love me again? Why well, love you too? <laughs> okay. All right. If that's it, then let's go ahead and pray. Let's do the prophet prayer. You pray? Do the prophet prayer? Do the prophet prayer. Yep, that prayer. Ready? Let's pray. You do the prophet prayer, the book. Oh, good girl. Our God and Father in heaven, we are grateful for you and for all of the wonderful things you do for us and for everybody uh, who calls on your name. We thank you, Father, for recording the Bible for us and keeping all of these great stories uh, so that we can read them and we can learn about you. We thank you so much for teaching us how to behave and who we ought to be. We thank you for sending Jesus, our Joshua, to lead us home to be with you. We pray, Father, that you will help our feet to walk on the way, that you will help our eyes to see and our hearts to love and seek after you. Please give us wisdom, Father, to live like you would have us to live. We pray tonight uh, for our rest, that you would help us to have uh, good dreams and good rest so we can have energy and bright and shining faces to serve you in the morning. We love you so much. We're so grateful for everything you do. You truly are the highest king and the greatest God. You are above everything and beyond anything. We are so grateful that you think of us and that you love us. Amen. All right. Okay, boys. Boys to your rooms. Uh, girls to the girl room. Dad, there's stuff I need to do with the stuff. Go on, Lindy. Hey!